Do, 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 do. Huh? Hi, Shh. James from Ingvid. I'm going to do a video on uh, phrasal verbs. I'm going out, but I'm just listening to E's conversation. Hold on. Yeah, let's not ask James over tonight. What, E? <clears throat> Excuse me for a second, guys. What do you mean, don't ask James over? Why aren't you going to invite me? In English, we use a lot of phrasal verbs uh, to talk about interactions, social interactions, when we get together and what we do. Today's lesson, I'm going to take some phrasal verbs and I'm going to show you how we use the prepositions to affect the verb to talk about how our meetings are going, whether our plans fell through, whether I'm going to ask you out, or we hook up, so you'll know the difference and you'll be able to understand them in context. Are you ready? Let's go to the board. Traitor. So E doesn't want to ask me over. Okay, so we're going to get there and find out what he means by that. But let's first take a look. I put cheers because a lot of these idioms have to do with social interactions and how we meet or don't meet. So let's start with the first one. I'm going to start over here, out. Well, when you ask somebody out, it's to invite them to go out and do something. Seems obvious, yes? But when we ask someone out, usually it's a member of the opposite sex. So as a man, I will ask a woman out for a date. So you might go, hey, uh, I was wondering, uh, Lori, could I ask you out for dinner tonight? Now, you wouldn't say that to just a friend because you'd say, hey, you want to go out? In this case, I'm asking you out so you can say yes or no. So asking you out means to get out of the house or go out, go outside somewhere. And specifically, we usually use it for a romance. So keep that in mind, right? Because when we're talking about out, we're leaving something. We're going outside of a boundary. Now, you see, get out and go out. And you're probably going, duh, we know what that means is to leave. Actually, no. If I said to you, I don't go out very often. Remember I told you to go outside of a boundary? Well, going out in this case means I don't have any fun activities that I do. Yes, it does entail or it does involve, involve leaving, but more it's more going to do fun activities. So if I say to you, I need to go out more, I'm not saying just leave my house, but I want to do something. Movies, dancing, singing, vacation. I need to get out, right? Or I go, you need to get out more. I don't mean just leave your house. It means go do something, get an ice cream, uh, talk to friends, go to Starbucks, something. So when we use out and either ask out or get out, please remember ask out is usually for romantic involvement. So if you're a man asking a woman or a woman asking a man in English and you say, I want to ask you out, they're going to think dating. Don't forget that. Okay. Now getting out and going out means I need to go and do some more fun activities. Good. Now, if you're going to go out, you probably want to get back in, right? So when we're coming back in, uh, we're going to talk about in being involved in. Now you're going to notice I have three words here, drop, pop, stop, drop, pop, stop, and no, it's not dancing. <laughs> um, I'm going to start with these ones, and I'm going to go back to this one, the top one, which may seem odd, but you'll find in. A pop is very quick, right? You pop, pop, it's gone. And when you stop, you stop. You kind of stop right now. When we say pop in or stop in, we talk about a short visit. So I'm going to stop in for a second, and then I'm going to leave, or I'm going to pop in, and then I'll leave. So don't expect me to stay for three or four hours. Maybe you invite me and you go, hey, come over to my place, we'll have a drink, and I'll go, cool. I, go, I can only pop in for five minutes. It's going to be a short, short stay. Or I can only stop in for about five, ten minutes, maybe an hour. I've got to go to another dinner. So this is short. So then you're going to go to me, or probably you'll say, so if that's short, that's going to be short as well. No, it's similar, but not the same. When you drop something, Okay. Usually when I say I drop it, I can drop it on purpose, but sometimes I drop something by accident. It was unexpected. I didn't mean to drop that. I mean, really. If it was a drink and you had a beer, you wouldn't drop it on purpose. Usually it's an accident. When you drop into somebody's place, it's usually unexpected. Right? It's not that you might not be invited, but it's usually unexpected. And yeah, someone doesn't expect you to be there. So you might say, yeah, my friend Bobby always drops in when I'm usually busy. I'm not saying I don't want Bobby to be there, but it's a bit unexpected. Now you can ask somebody to drop in, okay? But even from that, I go, hey, you can drop in about five o'clock. 
I'm kind of giving it, it wasn't planned, maybe I'm offering it out to you now. Okay, so why don't you drop in, which is different than drop by. Okay, so we're going to say drop in. If someone drops in, usually unexpectedly. Pop and stop, usually like it's fast, not long. Okay, so we've, we've gone in, we've gone out, and why don't we do up? Up means usually to increase or improve when you talk about this preposition. And we've got pick up, meet up, hook up. Well, pick up, as you can see, this is on my arm when I pick it up. I'm going to remove it from somewhere and make it join me. Okay, so I'm going to pick you up at seven o'clock means you will go at your house, I will come, pick you up in my car, usually a car or some vehicle, and I will take you away. Cool? All right, so I'll pick you up later. I'm going to come back to pick up because it has more than one meaning. And it's going to be similar to hook up, okay? So we'll come back to that after. Now, meet up means to get together. As you know, when two people meet, well, I have markers, when two people meet, they come together. I'll meet you. So when we meet up, it means, okay, I'm going to meet you at a different time. Where? Well, let's meet up at John's place. It means we'll go and arrive together at John's place, or we'll see each other there. So if I say to you, let's meet up about seven o'clock, let's get together at seven o'clock. Where do you want to meet up? Let's meet up at the school. Okay? Join and come together. So that's what meet up means. Now let's look up at hook up. Well, I got a friend and his name is Bobby. And I tried to hook him up with a, a girlfriend of mine named Sarah. In this case, I tried to, because a hook, if you know what a hook is, right? A hook. We use hooks to catch fish, right? So here's my little fish. It's not the best fish in the world. Do do do. And this fish isn't happy because I just hooked him. So when you hook up, usually means get together, but usually for dating, and it can have sexual connotations or a sexual uh, meaning to it. Now, pick up and hook up are related in a different way. If you pick someone up, it means to go out to look for someone of the opposite sex. So it means if you're trying to pick up girls, you'll go to the bar and you're like, hey, I'm Bobby and uh, I'm here to meet some friendly girls, right? Or if you're a girl, uh, yeah, you can pick up guys too. It's the 21st century. Uh, you know, hi, I'm Sarah and I would love to meet you. Now, hooking up goes a little further. So if you say, I picked somebody up and you move into hooked up, it means then you got together a little bit romantically, okay? So yeah, I picked her up at the bar and you know, we hooked up a couple days later. So I met her at the bar, then we hooked up, we got together in a romantic way later. Mm. So careful how you use these things, okay? I don't want you getting in trouble. So if you've got a wife and you say, yeah, I hooked up with a girl the other day, you might be divorced. <laughs> but if you tell your friends, hey, I hooked up with a girl the other day, they're gonna go, hey, way to go. Or if you're a girl and you say, I hooked up with a guy the other day, go, is he nice? No, did you meet his mother yet? All right, so we've talked about up and how that's increasing. Now let's look at over and off. Over means, as you know, here's something, if you go over it, it's not just to go up, but to, well, it can be up as well, but to go over, you might say, to, I'm trying to think of a word that would describe more than, all right? More than, so when we look at ask over, it means to invite. And if you notice over here, Mr. E didn't want to ask me over. He didn't want to invite me. So if I say, hey, why don't you ask over your brother? It means why don't you invite them? Have somebody over. Uh, usually when we're having people over, it means we're inviting them to our pl place. They're going to be staying at our house or our apartment. Okay? Come over is also an invitation. Why don't you come over? So it means we're here. So I'm inviting you once again. Why don't you come over to my place later on? I'm inviting you to my place. While bring over means bring something with you. So when you come over tonight, why don't you bring over a pizza? All right? And I remember I said it's kind of a little bit more than. It's kind of an increase or, yeah, a little bit of an increase. So it's not just up, which should go this way. We're saying to do more than. So I'm asking you to go from here, over here, moving, right? That's more than just going up. Have people over, a gathering. I'm having a few people over tonight. Invited a group. Come over, I'm inviting you over, bring over, bring with you something more than yourself. Cool? Now, here's something funny. We had a uh, pick up, and I'm going to go here to drop off. Well, when I picked up this cloth, I removed it. Dropping it off means to 
put something back or leave something. So I might pick you up at 7, but I'll drop you off at 11, means I will bring you back and leave you. Or I can drop you off at the subway, which means take you to the subway and leave you. Now, before I drop off this conversation and move to uh, the board for a test, let's quickly go through it, make sure you've got everything. When we ask somebody out, be careful. Oh, before I forget something, because uh, Lorenzo from EC, thank you very much for Lorenzo. I met you at the train and you said this would be a wonderful lesson for, my, uh, for some students I know. I'm like, so here you go. Okay, this one's for you. Thanks, Lorenzo. Anyway, where was I? So before I drop off this conversation and go to the test, we'll quickly go over. Ask out can usually be romantic, so be careful how you use that one. Get out or go out means to have fun. Go do something fun, not just leave your house. Drop in uh, usually can be an ex unexpected visit from someone. While pop in or stop by, or sorry, stop in can be a quick meeting. Okay, uh, a, quick, a quick visit. Up, when we pick someone up and hook up, that can have romantic meaning, so careful if you hook up with someone, definitely. And if you pick someone up, usually you meet them in a bar environment or something like that because you want to get to know them in a romantic way. Meet up means come together. When we ask over, have over, or come over, it means usually either, well, this one we can use for a group of people. I'm having some people over for Christmas. That means I've invited them. I'm asking them and coming, and if you come over, you're coming to my house. I ask you over to invite you. And if you're asked to bring something over, it means bring something with you. And lastly, as we said, drop off is the opposite of pick up. In this case, you pick me up at 7 at my house, but you'll drop me off at 11 at my dad's house. Cool? Well, great. Now that we've done that, cheers! And let's go and see if you really understand. Okay, so let's go to the board and see how well you've learned the phrasal verbs from meeting people. Now, this is really long sentences, and when we're done with this, we're probably going to see, you're going to see a lot of this stuff or information disappear. A lot of it's unnecessary, and that's why we use phrasal verbs. You'll notice on the bottom, I have written out a bunch of phrasal verbs. Some we'll reuse over and over again. And you'll notice this one, you'll go, you didn't teach us this one. I will teach it to you in the bonus section. Let's see if you can figure it out by this, you, how we use the sentence. So let's start at the top. Let's identify what we should change. Now, we did the other phrasal verbs, and I gave you definitions. So some of these things should jump out at you right away that, oh, we could use a phrasal verb here. Other things may not be as obvious. So, Genghis wanted to do something fun out of his home. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to say something up here. We did one with that. On Friday and go somewhere with some old friends. And look how, it's not one or two words. I'm almost taking on an entire sentence here. He decided he would invite some friends. From his work to his home. When James came to his house, when I go, uh, when James Genghis asked him if he could go out and get some of his friends. And bring them back to his place. Is there anything left of the sentence? <laughs> okay. Mr. E came to the party rather late and wasn't expected. He came because his girlfriend canceled plans with him. He had brought to Genghis's home a pizza and some beer. Even though he hadn't been invited to join them at Genghis's house. So, to read the story, Genghis wanted to do something fun out of his home on Friday and to go out somewhere and join some old friends. <sighs> that sentence is just too long. It's a mouthful. He decided he would also invite some friends from work to his home. When James came to his house, Genghis asked him if he could go out and get some of his friends and bring them back to his place. Once again, a lot of words. 
When we're done with this, we're going to make it so much simpler. Mr. E came to the party rather late and wasn't expected. He came because his girlfriend canceled plans with him. He had brought to Genghis' home a pizza and some beer, even though he hadn't been invited to come and join them at Genghis' house. Now, some of you will have a good idea right now, and you could probably stop the video and make all the changes. I've given you some help by outlining what we need to look at, and you can give it a try right away and see if you can put the right phrasal verbs in the correct places. And some of you will go through it together, and I'll explain why. So you ready? Let's go. Okay, so let's put in the proper phrasal verbs. So Genghis wanted to do something fun out, out of his home. If you remember rightly, we talked about get out. Okay? We talked about get out because that's fun and it means leave your house. Yeah? So we're going to get rid of all of this. Whoa! And look how that, the whole sentence is gone and we put get out or go out on Friday. Okay? So that one's there. What's the next one we're going to look at? So Genghis wanted to get out on Friday and go somewhere to meet some old friends. Well, remember when we said like when you're going to go to a place and people get together? We talked about getting together and we talked about which one? To meet up. So we're going to get rid of this. And notice again, this whole sentence is gone. A whole sentence fragment. So we put meet up with some old friends. So a couple words are still there. But you can see how many words are taken out. And we can do that because this has more meaning. What about the third one? He decided he would also invite some friends from work. Uh, okay, now these are different. These are old friends and these are some friends from work. All right. So, what are we going to put? Because it's an invitation. And it's not a scout. Remember, that was romantic. But you got the right idea, right? So, so he's asked the, these people to come over to his house. Okay, so he's going to meet up with some other friends at a bar, maybe, I don't know. And then he said, hey, when I'm done, that will ask some people to come to my place. What about the next one? When James came to his house, you kind of helped because that verb's going to help you. What do you think it'll be? Good. Now, I said we say came over was an invite to somebody's home. Well, in this case, we're going to have James come over, come over to his house, or when James came over. Genghis asked him if he could do something. What do you think it will be? In fact, I told you we're going to do two at the same time on this one. So you have to know they're kind of related. We've already used came over. Well, you always used get out and meet up. Which two are kind of really uh, related? That's right. Remember I talked about pick, drop off, and pick up? So let's look at these two sentences here. We can eliminate a lot of the words simply by saying, if he could pick up, unfortunately I erased some, but it's like pick up some, and you notice how many words disappear there? Some of his friends, and do what? Yeah, so there's, there's them right there, right? And drop them off at his place. All right, so I'm going to put this at his place. All right. Well, we don't need to. We can say, hey, can you pick up some friends and drop them off here? Next. Mr. E came to the party rather late and wasn't expected. Hmm. Now, we have to actually change the sentence and we can make it easier, right? So, if we go here, because we got rather late, I still need that because it tells me when he came. But we're going to go here. And remember when we talked about not being expected or doing it by surprise? That's going to be dropped in. And we're not going to say came, but Mr. E
Okay. It's almost the same as the last one, but we've moved it around. But anyway, you dropped in rather late to the party, so we're saying that, okay? Now this is complex, and this is the one you might be surprised, because I haven't taught it to you yet, but you'll understand it, and you will be able to use this one when, when you need it. Okay, so it says, he came because his girlfriend canceled plans with him. Well, we have a, phase, uh, a phrasal verb, fail, fall, fell, and through means like through a hole, so fell through. So something went through, Didn't, it wasn't caught. So if I try to catch it, it falls through, I miss it. Okay, it's like missed opportunity. So we're going to have to change this, but you'll understand because it means when something fell through, which is this one here, it means you had a plan, but it didn't happen. You had a plan, here's your plan, and you're like, I'm gonna do my plan, ah, I missed my plan. It fell through, okay? So we're gonna go here, he came because, Look at this, we're gonna, all these juicy words have to go away. He came because his plans with his girlfriend fell through. And this could happen to you. You're planning on going to play soccer today, it's a brilliant day, you get all your friends, you call, you say, we'll have a picnic, we're gonna go out, and then, it's raining and it's storming for hours. Well, you go, I was gonna go up, but my, pan, my plans fell through because the weather changed, right? Or I was gonna fly to pl Paris, um, but I had to go get a job, but my plans fell through because they canceled giving me the job. So your plans don't actually happen. So he came to the party unexpectedly. No one expected him to be there. He came late because his plans fell through. And all of a sudden, all of this makes more sense. Why did he come late? He had plans that were canceled. Okay, and was he expected? No, because people probably knew he had plans. Okay. He had brought to Genghis' home a, beer, a pizza and some beer. What do you think we should use? Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> obvious. We're getting down to the last ones. So he had brought over. Right? We don't, we don't have to say to Genghis' home. We just say he had brought over. Because it's understood. Remember we talked about bringing something over to someone's house, asking them over, coming over. So in this case, he brought over a pizza and some beer. You don't need to say to a house. And that's the beauty of using phrasal verbs. It's understood without being said. So you don't have to... I should say this. I tell students many times you have to say everything in English. English is a stupid language. You must say everything. We use phrasal verbs so we don't have to. <laughs> so that's why I'm teaching you this to, to you, right? So you don't need to say, brought it over to his home. It's understood, brought it over to his home because that's where the party is, okay? And even though he hadn't been over, invite, invite, sorry, he hadn't been invited to come and join that Genghis's house, I'm gonna be reusing one we asked here and see if you can find out what it is. Okay, so we got brought over. What's left? What's left? Okay even though he hadn't been asked over. So even though he hadn't been asked over, and we don't need to say, we can say act to Genghis's house if you really wanted to, but look, all of this goes away to Genghis's house. You can see how we've gotten rid of all this extra space, how when we use phrasal verbs, we can just drop off a lot of language. The information is still there and it's understood. So if I read it, which we're going to do, we can see how it reads now as compared to before. Genghis wanted to get out, right, on Friday, or Genghis wanted to go out on Friday and, and to meet up with some old friends. He decided to ask over some friends from work to his home. When James came over, Genghis asked him if he could pick up some of his friends and drop them off at his place. Mr. E dropped in rather late to the party. He came because his plans with his girlfriend fell through. He had brought over a pizza and some beer, even though he hadn't been asked over to Genghis's house. Sounds nicer, doesn't it? Much nicer, not too much clearer. So I want you to start using these phrasal verbs in your everyday life. We've done some practice. You probably did pretty well. Some of you better than others because you could stop the video. But... Practice makes perfect, 
And before I go to what your homework is to make sure you can do some practice, I want to give you a couple more phrasal verbs as a bonus. We did fell through, and remember that's when you have a plan and the plan doesn't happen, it falls through. Okay, it means you didn't get what you didn't get it, it fell and went away. You can say something, I know this isn't a phrasal verb, but it's something you can use in relation when you're in a relations, uh, or sorry, you're meeting people. If you say, I'll take a rain check. Well, a check is like money, and most of you know what a check is. It's a piece of paper where you will, you know, you say to someone, it's like a note that promises. So you say, you write, there's your name, you write this, you write the amount of money, and then you sign it. And that's a check. Well, in Canada, it's called check with a QE. In the United States, it's a check like this. So you might sign check here. And a rain check, you can actually go to a store, which means I cannot do this now, but I will do it later. Let me repeat. I cannot do this now, but I want to do this later. If you go to a store and you get a rain check, maybe they're selling books and they don't have any more books. They'll say, here's a rain check. You can come back and get the book later on when we have the book and you can, it'll be, you'll be able to get it. When you say, I'll take a rain check, maybe I say to you, hey, person out there, do you want to go to dinner with me tonight? And you go, oh, I wish I could, but Mr. E invited me to his party. I can't go tonight, but let me take a rain check, which means I can't do it tonight, but later on, I definitely want to get together and we'll do this. I don't know when, but we will do it. Why am I being very specific? Because when we say postpone, it means to take an event and do it later. A rain check is different. That means I don't know when, but we're going to do it. While postpone means let's delay it until later. So you're moving the date down. We need to postpone it a week. When you take a rain check, I can't say a week. I can't say I'll take a rain check for a week. I just say, I'll take a rain check. I'll take it, put it in my pocket. And someday we're going to do it because I want to. While postpone means we will do it later. And that's another one. It's not a phrasal verb, but it's something you can use in conversation. And that's why this is the bonus section. <laughs> so I can give you this stuff and it doesn't have to follow all the rules, but it's useful. Now, what happens if you run into someone or bump into someone by accident? So you're walking and you're like, oh, hey, Jerry, fancy meeting you here. What a surprise. I didn't think I'd meet you here at church. <laughs> you know, or I didn't think I'd meet you here in the library because you don't like to read. Uh, okay, so run into, run, bang. Bump into means like to, boom, hit into someone. It means accidental meeting. Okay, so you're meeting someone by accident. You weren't planning on it. You were grocery shopping, you looked up and you go, hey, it's nice to meet you here. I haven't seen you in five years. I'm surprised to see you here. You can use either run into or bump into. Okay. Now here's something you can say to somebody when you run into them or bump into them and you haven't expected to meet them and it's been a long time. You can talk and say, what have you been up to? Or what are you up to? What have you been up to? This means you have not seen each other in a while, and I want to know the activities you've done. So I haven't, if I haven't seen you in five years, and I say, hey, what have you been up to in the last five years? It means, what have you done from the last time I saw you up until today? You don't have to give me today. Well, this morning I woke up and had a shower. I had an egg, and then I walked the dog, and then I went to the washroom. Then I, put on th I don't need to know that. I just mean, generally tell me what's changed in your life. And if I say, what are you up to? It could be you're doing something. You say, oh, well, I'm making some dinner right now. What are you up to? So to be up to something means what are you doing or what have you been doing? Present perfect means from the time I last saw you up to now. And what are you up to means now. So what are you up to? You might say, hey, I'm working at a law firm. Just started last week. And what have you been up to? Well, well, it's been a long time. Got married, got some kids, moved country. Present perfect over time up to in the moment. Cool? All right. So you just bumped into your friend and you got something interesting to say. Homework. <laughs> okay. So homework here. What I'd like you to do is write a short story that you can practice. You can make an event like Mr. Genghis from Turkey did, or uh, you can have Mr. E and I in your story. You could ask us to meet up with you. You can ask us over. And I guess I I do like to be invited over. Asparagus is my favorite vegetable. Okay. Um, uh, so write a story you can practice with a friend. So you can, you know, invite them out and use these words. You know, my plans fell through. What are you up to tonight? Oh, I'm not doing very much. Hey, well, why don't you come over? Uh, I'll bring over. And you can do that. And you can go to Ingvid because I have seen lots of people 
under the videos, actually practice some of the stuff and go to the website after doing the quiz, joining the community there and exchanging sentences. I'd like to see you there. Anyway, I've got to get going, but please don't forget to subscribe and click that bell. Um, when you do, it not only rings here, but any new video I put out, it'll be brought directly to you. All right. And you can also go to www.ingrid.com. Anyway, hope you had fun. Um, I'm going to take a rain check and hang out here. I'd love to do this again though, right? And uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to pick up some Chinese food on my way out of here. See you later.